Well, hello everyone, it is Shooter. Hey, welcome to Primary Waves. Of course, at the end of our presentation, please do review our disclosures. Not much has changed. There's a couple of charts that I think will get going here. Wanted to jump into those this week. You know, STAG is one we've been, you know, we're right at last week, we're testing our breakout. Didn't really get enough euphoria to get up and out above that. But I think we have a decent breakout once we get above that. Or it'll, you know, once we get above that 39, maybe. <clears throat> because there's really no resistance up here until 42. So I think that 44 is eminent. I think by the end of uh, the second week of January at the latest. By right, taking a look at shop, you know, we broke above the breakout line. We've back tested it, closed above it. You know, so I would suspect that we see some continuation in shop this week. And we have some significant upside here in the count. You know, 50% back, at least according to my analyst, uh, you know, is about 110. So I mean, definitely have some upside there. Uh, then I wanted to uh, address Blackstone. You know, we're right at the breakout line. Rejected it more than I would like. But, you know, hey, it's what it is. Now, I know uh, some of you in our group have been chasing 80 and 90 January calls, and I know you're up quite a little bit on that. We see a little activity to the upside by the end of the week. Then I would hold through next week, maybe. But I think I definitely would close those out, um, you know, before the the Christmas holiday comes in. Um, because I, I I don't know that you want to hold them, being that you're only going to have about two and a half weeks uh, coming into the new year after the Christmas break, because there's no volume that week. So, and then maybe after the new year, we start scaling up and looking at, you know, 120 or 125 calls, maybe in March, because I believe this is one that will continue to the upside. Now, Fifth Third Bank, you know, I'm not a big enthusiast of banks, but last week, man, banks were moving. We had a breath thrust indicator trip last week on financials. So I don't know, maybe they're already on the path to recovery. My bias still is the rates are not priced in the refis, specifically on the commercial side. So uh, this is not my cup of tea, but we get above this 200-day. You know, my golden rule has always been above the 200-day, I'm bullish. Below the 50-day, I'm bearish. Above eight-day resistance, I'm bullish. Below eight-day support, I'm bearish. So, you know, and we have all of those in front of us here in this particular chart. And we have at least a double up to $60 here, um, you know, on the upside for our primary wave three. So nice looking chart. Now, Generac is one that's been, I, I mean, forever, forever here. <laughs> I mean, we were chasing it back over here, actually. Uh, I think we get, you know, we're above the 50 day now, constructive. Not as aggressive as I was like. Volume still seems to be a little light for me here. Um, but then again, you know, this whole leg, look how low our volume was here. You know, we haven't resorted to that type of pattern again. So we might be in this base a little while longer. I mean, we could go all the way out to July 24. And I don't think that would be out there too long. You know, sometimes these bases, the, the old saying is the longer the base, the better the grace. Ah, that's hopeful here. So maybe we're looking for 356 to the upside. Big move. Now, this is an ABC pattern. This is our A, B, and then C is suggesting lower. So technically, this is a counter trend play. All right, I want to look at Disney this week. You know, got a nice move off of our first primary wave. We've got a second primary wave setup that triggered, and we got a 90-minute 90, 90 trigger on that. Uh, we still haven't gotten a weekly on the first one, so it's what I refer to as a stacking set up, uh, which is usually good. That just means we're building, you know, doing that stair step motion up. Um, you know, and quite often you'll get three, four, five, sometimes even six of these in a row before we get a back test. Just depends on the stock and really how much volume is coming in. But we really have, uh, you know, last couple of weeks, we've really lost the red that we were seeing, you know, that seemed to be so dominant, even in this last part of this leg up here. And just before our breakout, you know, we had a huge volume of of a sell coming off of this, you know, in the uh, the COVID lows, which would be expected from Disney, even though they have a lot of revenues coming from online. But, you know, at this point where our cycle wave one and two is in, we're looking for our three at 107 from where we are now. Now, this is a digital realty trust DLR, you know, looking for our three around 142. You know, we're doing our back test now. It would not be surprised me if, 
it goes down to my strategy, you know, where we test the red line down here, it wouldn't invalidate the upside because we really haven't gotten nothing off of this three as far as back test. So 50% back of this leg could come all the way down to the 23.6 at 124. Um, and really it's done nothing wrong. So just keep that in mind. And then we're going to address EPR today. You know, we're in this base I don't like it as, as, you know, again, it's another property stock, but again, it has some nice upside here. I mean, it really does. I mean, we're talking a $45 stock and our primary wave three is up at 90 bucks, you know. So, you know, just looking at, you know, the, the base, you know, we really don't have a confirmed low because our last confirmed low was here. We had no divergence on a low there. Yeah. So this could fail. I mean, just... Technically, when I look at a chart, I'm always looking at the other side of the tape. Why shouldn't we get out? So we closed below the 200-day. I probably would you cut and run or cut 50% and run. But I do think we're pretty close to getting out because this, we got rejected. I mean, we built this base out after this flush from the COVID lows. And we couldn't hold it. Rejected price went down to the next level, right? Now we've stepped up halfway in between. So I would suspect we step up again and then step up again and keep going. That's just the look to me. So, well, that's it for today for the public version, folks. Of course, please like and subscribe if you like our work. Um, and of course, please do join us in uh, Fundamental Trends, whether it be as an ETF subscriber uh, or uh, a rare subscriber, which is where you see a majority of my work. However, we're starting to post some stuff elsewhere as well. Um, and But the, I mean, the biggest plus to our membership is going to be our weekly primary waves article that we do, uh, which is what you're viewing now. Um, and this is just a sample of what we do. So hopefully I encourage you to join us. Uh, that's what we have, folks. Great trading until next time.